morning friends today is the fifth sunday in lent and i wish you all a meaningful time of worship together with us blessed be god father son and holy spirit blessed be god's kingdom now and forever the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, so to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now read today's psalm. Today's Psalms reading, Psalms 130. Psalms 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears consider well the voice, voice of the my supplication. supplication. If you, Lord, should know what we do wrong, who then, O Lord, could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall, shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. And in his word is my hope. My soul looks for the Lord. More, More than, than watchmen for the morning. morning. More, More, I say, than watchmen for the morning. morning. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. And, and with, with him is his ample redemption. redemption. He will redeem Israel for the multitude of their, of their sins. sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And as it was in the beginning, beginning and, and now, and, and ever shall be, world, world without end. end. Amen. Amen. Today's first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 6. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. 
and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's Gospel reading is quite familiar to us. Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. I'm reading select verses from that long passage. As recorded in the Gospel according to John chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill. Lazarus with me the village of Mary and sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with his hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is, was, is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked up word and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him. And let him go for the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Today's prayer is. Life giving God. Your Son came into the world to free us from sin and death. Breathe upon us with the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in holiness and righteousness in all our days. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, let me begin this brief meditation by reading again the words of Martha and Mary. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. We too have made similar statements or questions at times in our lives. God, where are you? Do you not see what I am going through? Why are you not taking control of my situation as my God? The world is asking the same question now as we experience the bite of COVID-19. Where are you, God? Are you real? Social media is overflowing with messages, videos and trolls against God and prayer. It's haste asked to all religious groups, where is your God? Some even rejoice because worship places are closed. There is joy even within different religious groups, hidden joy. Some are pleased that the Eucharist is paused. Some cheer up because mosques are closed. Some celebrate because Hindu temples are closed. And different religions try to answer the pandemic differently. One religious leader says that Corona is God incarnate to punish all non-vegetarians, meat lovers. Some environmentalists, conservationists view that it's a penalty for killing and eating several wild and endangered species because it all started in Wuhan market where such live animals are brought and killed each day. And Christian responses are also diverse. Some say that COVID does not indicate God's absence, but it validates God's presence because it partially, partly fulfills some Old Testament prophecies about plagues. Even quarantine is not an expression of unbelief. The book of Leviticus provides very strict quarantine regulations for those who suffer in infectious diseases. Chapter 13. So it does not indicate God's powerlessness to protect us or heal us. But it's a demand of wisdom and especially an expression of our neighborly love. Noah's Ark is another example of quarantine, of a family and animals. Jesus' parents quarantined him as commanded by an angel when they took the child and escaped to Egypt to protect him from being killed. So quarantine is not alien to Christian faith. Some Christians view the pandemic as a wages of sin and therefore a call to people to repent and turn away from sin. And some others view this as the beginning of end times, 
God giving a slight taste of what life will be during the great tribulation that is mentioned in the book of Revelation. In today's gospel we see a peculiar, an interesting thing. Listen to this verse again. Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Here three things are worth noticing. Jesus loved them. Also Jesus knew that Lazarus is ill, but Jesus does not rush. He intentionally waits or delays himself because he saw in Lazarus' death the possibility of the inbreaking of God's glory. So what am I going to say? If I sound even a little that God wants to show God's glory through the death of several thousands of people, that is not gospel at all. What I say is, this verse says that Jesus loved them. Jesus knew that what was happening, but delayed responding to the situation. In the scripture we find God using disappointments and sufferings as an entry point into human lives, suffering as an agency for transformation. In the death of Lazarus, Jesus reveals himself as the Lord of resurrection and life. In the context of the pandemic, one thing we should not miss noticing is that except us, human beings. The entire creation looks calm and peaceful with the virus among us. All of a sudden, the nature is less polluted, the air is cleaner, the water is cleaner, because thousands of lights are ground, private and Public transportations are cancelled, industries are shut down, poisonous smoke emissions reduced. We don't know how for long, but as of now, the nature looks rejoicing. And this virus proved much more powerful than several high table anti pollution campaigns. This virus is also teaching us a great principle of co-living, co-existence. It still lives in animals, but they don't have any problem. It still lives in many human beings without destroying human life. But when this virus wants to live aggressively in us, we die. There are several bacteria and viruses still living in our bodies and they assist our living. Their habitats do not kill us. We have learned to live with them and they have learned to live inside us. They will lose their habitat if they live aggressively in us. So they mutate themselves to milder life. But we human beings have not learned it to live such a healthy life with the rest of God's creation. I'll be tagging a few videos after this worship to see how the nature is rejoicing. Some of you must have already seen them. How they plead with us for an altered pattern of pattern of living with them. 
in the words of the gospel reading today, to unbind them and let them go. God works through mysterious ways, but works always with a purpose, and that purpose is rooted in God's love for us and for all God's creation. No parent want to see his or her children suffer. God does not want to see us suffer or fail. In families, now there is more time to spend together. The virus offered it. And we realize that we can also be happy for our family time. So the virus is also teaching us to figure out the non-essential things in our life. The virus has also taught us to slow down and see those who are around us who cannot pace with the modern speed. So it is teaching us several basics of being human. I am not glorifying the virus. We need to combat it. We are to do everything possible to uphold life. God is the source, honor, redeemer and sustainer of life. And so by protecting life, we become participants in God's mission in this world. As we pass through these difficult days, let us be assured that God is with us. God sees us. Let us stay safe, pray for the whole world, and also seek for God's will in our own lives. Amen. God bless. God, our creator, at the beginning of time, you breathed life into your creatures. Hear our prayers for your world and its people. We pray for all whose lives are bound by war, disaster or oppression. For the hungry, the homeless, the refugees. Especially we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus outbreak. Those who have contracted the disease, those who have succumbed to it, the medical teams treating the infected and the researchers looking for a vaccine, all essential service providers and all who are suddenly unemployed. We pray for the leaders of the world as they work together for the safety of their own people and for humanity. Breathe on your children your spirit of hope and possibility. O oh God, put your spirit within us and we shall live. God our Redeemer, you hold before us the choice of life or death. Hear our prayers for your worldwide church. We pray that your word may continue to be heard while your churches are closed. We pray for the leaders of churches and for all who minister in your name. We pray for Santosh and his family. Breathe on your church, your spirit of passion and power. O oh God, put your spirit within us and we shall live. O oh God, our companion, you have shown to your people the way of true love. Hear our prayers for the communities in which we live. We pray for all those who are now bound by social and self-isolation, for our places of work, as they face uncertainty for our neighbours, our families and our friends. Breathe on your children your spirit of reconciliation and love. O oh God, put your spirit within us and we shall live. God our comforter, you wept at the death of your friend Lazarus. Hear our prayers for all those in need and for those who minister to them. 
We pray for all whose lives are bound by despair, misery, confusion or pain. For the lonely, the forgotten and all who mourn. For the sick and all who are close to death. Breathe on your children your spirit of comfort and consolation. O oh God, put your spirit within us and we shall live. God, our resurrection and life, by your dying and rising, you bring new life to others. Hear your, our prayers for all who have died. We give thanks for the faithful people of this parish who have gone before us, for those whose yearly remembrance occurs at this time. Call us forth from the tomb and set us free from all that binds us in death, and that with Lazarus and your friends in every age, we may rise to new life with you forever. O oh God, put your spirit within us and we shall live. Now for the notices. Uh, there's a parish prayer chain which is going to happen at 8 o'clock, 8am. 8 um, for a moment we're going to be in prayer. The cycle is that St Clement's worshippers, Mondays and Tuesdays uh, at 8am, St Philip's worshippers, Wednesdays and Thursdays, CSI worshippers, Fridays and Saturdays, and all three congregations uh, on Sunday. So that's the prayer cycle at 8 a.m. Uh, this is available, of course, on the YouTube, on um, Facebook, but it's also available on YouTube, uh, and you can find those um, links elsewhere. Uh, Santosh is also very happy to uh, give out a, a printed copy of the sermon, if anybody wants that. Uh, and we'll, we'll be posting that as well. Um, the pew sheets uh, should have been posted out to people, so they'll be posted out each fortnight. However, if you don't want a hard copy, if you're getting it via email, please let Anne know. Um, and on the issue of Anne, the link Parish Voice, uh, this Sunday is the last chance to get your contributions in. So please mail them to Anne and it will be posted out later next week or early the week after. Uh, and I think that's uh, probably all the notices. Um, Santosh might have some more. There are some uh, birthday notices. Uh, Joan Harris on the 23rd, she celebrated 90 years. So congratulations to Joan. Pat Gration on the 23rd as well. Uh, Jashita is today on the 29th. So happy birthday to, to Jashita. Uh, Shopi and Sophia, on the 24th had their wedding anniversary. So uh, congratulations to all those people and our thoughts and prayers are with you all. Let us bow our heads for closing prayer and blessings. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God, Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.